Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Welcome to This Week in Geek. Tonight is, well, I screwed, I screwed up our regular shows. Now we're doing this. What is it, the 17th? I don't know, 20 something? Okay, 24th. It's the 24th. Like 17th. I fell into a time loop there. Sorry, Things man. happen. So, welcome to This Week in Geek. It's January 24th, 2015. We're going to talk some geek news. Uh, before we get into it, as per usual, I want to bring up. I, okay, Alil has... Oh, we should introduce ourselves. I'm Rob Southgate. Chris Mao. Chris Mao is owner of the Blue Box. and Woo-hoo! And I'm, a, and I'm Alil Canizzo. And Alil is from the show League of Geeks, as well as Nuff Said, which we're going to talk about both things here real quick. So first of all, on League of Geeks, they do a thing called my favorite stuff League of the week. of the week, yeah. yes. And I want to do my favorite thing of the week because something happened last night. We did a podcast on Nuff Said. Nuff Said is a uh, Marvel, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at all podcast. And w- one of the guys suggested that instead of the MCU, were the NSU, the Nuff Said universe. And I have not stopped thinking about that. He's like, we need T-shirts. We need mugs. I am so down Football with Football jerseys. It. So that was my favorite thing this week. I just thought that was so funny. And then we also talked about the new universe from Marvel, which we're not going to fall into that rabbit hole on this show. But no. uh, if you want to talk weird Marvel stuff, check out Nuff Said. So that was that was my first shameless plug. Uh, a little, you want you got something you want to bring up first? You had something. Well, well, you know, we're we're here in Elgin, Illinois, where we're we're at the Blue Box, and what's opening up in Schaumburg at Woodfield is um, Woodfield's a big mall here. Yes, I mean they're. The people in here probably know, but people across the country are like, yes, what's they, Woodfield? Well, it was at one point like the biggest mall in the world, and yes. you know now it's small compared to a lot of other ones. But at Woodfield Mall in Schaumburg, Illinois, they're opening up Level 257. And we actually talked about this early on uh, on the League of Geeks podcast. Sean brought it up. I didn't even know about it. He said it was in Chicago. And then we started looking it up, and all of a sudden he said it was in Schaumburg. And I'm like, that's our ba- my backyard, basically. Right, right. I'm always there. And uh, it's basically almost ready to open. They're, so, so what it is? Uh, that's what I was going to go into. They're, okay. They're, they're, it's a, it's a huge. I don't know if everybody knows that Sears had this big warehouse back behind the Woodfield, and they took this the entire. Woodfield. Where, Are the you Woodfield. one of those? I was over at the Soldier Field. The Soldier Fields. Yeah. Um, so okay, the <laughs> Woodfield. <laughs> um, they 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 t- they took this entire warehouse and turned it into. Basically, an 80s retro Pac-Man themed restaurant, bowling alley, arcade, everything. I mean, big this place of is awesomeness. going to be amazing. Yeah, and, and well, isn't they, it? they have big signs out that they, they can hold parties up to a thousand people. Yeah, they're, 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 it's going to have. I think it said 12 bowling lanes. It's going to be all up, you know, high class, you know, posh stuff that's that's looking awesome. But it's going to be retro with Pac-Man. Yeah, and that's well, awesome. Isn't it somebody involved, like the creator of Pac-Man, is the one opening well, it? Well, it's it's Namco that's involved. It's Namco, yeah. Namco okay. yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and the reason it's called Level Two Fifty Seven is that's the kill screen for, for Pac-Man. Pac-Man, the original. Yes. So that's what they've got this this bar out front. We we actually saw it yesterday. I was I was at the mall with Molly, my daughter, uh, for a class, and uh, you think we have no class, but we did have a little class yesterday, and we pulled out. and I'm like. What's that? Two fifty seven. Like I forgot. And you see, and I'm it? like, what is Sears rebranding? How stupid! And then I saw the ghosts, and it said Naming soon, and I went, 
oh, no, this isn't stupid. This is heaven. Yeah, we, we were there right when they started construction. Like, because my kids, I have, I have three children, they love the Rainforest Cafe. And if you love the Rainforest Cafe, become Landry members because you just get to the front of the line at all times. But you know, shameless plug for nothing. I, right. I have for no nothing. affiliation. Right. But it was awesome today. But they started all of a sudden painting the whole mall black, the whole side of it. I'm how like, many what's those, going on? How many of those giant brownie things have you eaten there? You oh, know they have that, the, like, the volcano cakes yeah. and rainforest? <laughs> of course, every time we have to get one now that the kids have seen them. It's they eat their food and the they get a volcano have, wait a minute, cake. Wait a minute, now that the kids have seen well, them. Well, they get a couple bites and Daddy finishes the rest. Okay, there we go. Chris and <laughs> I. Does an alien come out of them? I'm just wondering. Chris and I know you enough at this point that you go there on your own and we, we are convinced. <laughs> I speak for both of us. <laughs> Absolutely. I wish. I wish. I don't think I could handle one by myself, but. No. Okay, I probably could. But you know I, what? I, I don't could. want to. I would sit there by myself eating it, watching people staring at me. Do you want to hear my? <laughs> you want to hear my awful shame? It's not even shame. This is just awful. So I've got a gluten allergy. Okay. And a few years ago, we discovered this, and that was it. No more fun. No more dairy. No more gluten. Because I have these stupid allergies. I was all about the eating contest. So I see that volcano before it would have been like, what's the contest? It's like four of those in one sitting. I'll take it on. <laughs> now it's, it's man versus allergies. It's stu- it. Oop, I almost said something nasty. It stinks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on the mode from last night. Enough said went blue. Welcome it to the blue box. Yeah, the blue. <laughs> it, it went Apple very, so. yes. But so level 257, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. I will probably be there opening weekend, weekday, because I want to check this out. Vintage arcade games, all that kind of stuff is so awesome. Yeah, so awesome. And well, there, there's a place in Dundee called Underground Retrocade, and we're going to cool. be actually doing a Almost. live podcast there, like a live thing uh, for our 80s reboot show at some point. Oh, very cool. So I think we'll have to invite you out for that. Chris, will, you too. I will, I will take the invite, yes. <laughs> uh, I want to play arcade games. Yes. I it's, know. It's 15 or 20 bucks to play all that you want. You can play Frogger. You can play Pac-Man, Galaga, whatever you want. So done it, it's and it's great. done. Yeah, that's, that's a no-brainer, man. <laughs> okay, so let's get into geek news now that we've kind of done our weirdness. Um, I have a new segment for this, too, that I'm going to unveil, but we're not doing that yet. Uh, okay, so things that I saw in the geek news this week. There was a, it, it's funny because my first reaction was it was a slow week, but then I started going through and I filled a paper up very quickly with all these little things. Uh, one thing, let's, let's jump into Star Wars right away. Uh, so a big rumor resurfaced again this week, and th- this actually I thought was interesting, and I'm, I'm going to actually, I, the reason I want to bring it up, you can fall into a rabbit hole with these Star Wars rumors, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The spinoffs are a big thing people are talking about. And the big rumor is that the first one is going to be a Han Solo spinoff or a Boba Fett or a Yoda, right? Or uh, or, or, uh, uh, yeah, or, or yeah, IG-88 I mean, yeah. or <laughs> Hammerhead, the guy so, from the cantina. Right. Every or, popular character yeah. will get a spinoff. Yeah, one of them, yeah. So... What came out this week is, first of all, Gareth Edwards is the one directing it. As yep. long as he doesn't have the guy from Kick-Ass that he had in Godzilla, I'm all on board. Because Godzilla, there was a lot to like. And I think him working in Star Wars where he doesn't have to cut the budget and have Walt from uh, Breaking Bad leave after two weeks, I think yeah. that he can actually do something <laughs> so when terrible. he has a budget. Yes. But it also came out that the spinoff, it sounds like, is going to be Han and Boba Fett. I am much more interested in that, the story of Han and Boba Fett, rather than here's Han as a kid, and we're going to see him grow up, and then he gets his superpowers, and then, you know, he yeah. doesn't have superpowers. But I was going to say, yeah, no. you, you, you've lost your geek card. With yeah, that no, no, I know. But it, All I could think of is Superman. Every time they do a Superman movie, look, he's a kid, and now he's got superpowers. And, and then he yeah. kicks the football really far. Yeah. Um, now he's running. He, li- he lifts the tractor. And <laughs> <laughs> he lifts the tractor. And he watches his dad die. Exactly. Because and there's an dog. awkward moment so with a kid bad. with no clothes on. What? <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw that on the blue, Blu-ray, and blue. I'm like, well, I'm sorry I have a Blu-ray that player. Was, yeah, that was <laughs> 1977, right? Yeah. Yes. But... That kid with, turned out to be Screech on Saved by the Bell. Did you know that? No, it's no I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you almost that would be Chris so kind of fell for that one. <laughs> well, but that's kind know. of what I anticipated with a Boba Fett movie, that you would have to have Han. I think he would be the driving 
character because you, you if you watch Boba Fett go, I mean Han before this, you know any of his backstory. He's a smuggler. He's well, yeah, but was Boba Fett involved? Basically, with it. selling drugs. I mean, he's smuggling right. drugs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, right. And he's working for the bad guys. So I think the like a Boba and he's now. He's do you think they're going to have that, with these bounty hunters? Do you think they're going to have that doughy weird Jabba? Remember, he looked like kind of like he looked like our friend's mom, sort of. Remember when the he was original? younger and he looked like a no in Episode One. You remember what he looked like? He looked weird yeah. in Episode One. W- was that him or his? Another hunt. No, that was him. Was it? was it? Yeah, and then he had his was weird wife, young? and they yeah. were both, they looked the same. There was something odd about that. Well, I, so I'm just wondering, do you think we're going to get that hut, or do you think we're going to have blown out, like, Elvis hut? Oh, Elvis, what if he has the big sideburns? <laughs> Take my money for that toy. <laughs> Take my money for the Elvis, Elvis Java <laughs> toy. I, I think I would Holy be disappointed. Cow. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't want to see that. Java <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a jumpsuit. Oh, oh. That'd be great. Oh my god! Doesn't Sean on he, League of Geeks? He does mashups. He does. Can, let's commission him to do Java and Elvis for us. Chris is paying. I, I think he would turn down the money. I mean, I really. <laughs> oh, then he's a fool. I can't. You know what? I think we're going to make a movie out of that. We make a movie every week, don't we? I was going to say, yeah. If we Tusk start got a production made company. off of a podcast, why can't Jabba Elvis call, be made? Call Kevin Smith. True. Done. Jabba, Jabba and Elvis. Done. Let me write that down. We're doing that. So, what do you think of that news? Is is there anything more we got to talk about with it, or is it just we're laying it, it out a, there? It's a good tie-in because they do tie in in the movies. So why wouldn't it be another extension? And maybe it's just that. Han Solo is this the number one smuggler, and Boba Fett wants to be the number one bounty hunter. So he goes yeah. through the emphasis or, or the process of trying to capture him. What, what if they that. flip it and Boba Fett is the hero in it, and he's chasing Han? But rather than you focusing on Han being the hero and being chased, it's more like Boba Fett's rise as a bounty hunter, and you get empathy for him. That would be cool. And then you see his dad's head get cut off in that big arena. Oh no, we saw that already. Right. I was going to say yeah. that's way. That's yeah, way. yeah. He just has flashbacks of it. Yeah. And then you right. actually see the head oh, fall no. out of the helmet. Oh, no. Do you think they'll do that with the <laughs> flashbacks? And, and then he gets oh, superpowers no. and, you know. Yeah. And, then, and he, then we see his junk as he's in the right. field yeah. and, yeah. <laughs> Kevin Costner dies and then that's it. <laughs> No, Kevin Costner. <laughs> okay. I'm moving on to the next thing. Um, this, this is the news that ate our house this week. We talked about it last week as, hey, Jillian Anderson said that she'd love to do X-Files. Oh, yes, oh, yes. yes. All week, it's been – Fox is actually considering it. You know with the, uh, the amount of information that's kind of pushing forward, you've got Duchovny going on record saying, I'm in. You've got Jillian Anderson going, I'm in. See, my impressions are not very good. No. Uh, <laughs> it actually did sound like Jillian, but not like <laughs> David Duchovny. Yeah, not no, at all. yeah right. You, you have to go, I'm in. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> That's David Duchovny. That's David Duchovny, yeah. Wow, that's a good David. Um, so do you think – no, actually, I can do David. Scully, you've got some barbecue sauce on your face. <laughs> Let me get this. See? That's also my Han Solo impression, Jabba. We, and right. Keanu Reeves. Yeah, Anybody Keanu else? Reeves. No, that, that's whoa. So that was big news this week, though. It sounds like this is gaining steam. The fact that they're saying they're considering it, I say it's a done deal. I say that what they're doing is they're doing all the negotiations for salaries and all that right now. I am so excited for the X-Files. Is anyone excited for X-Files Return? Yeah. Woo. <laughs> a silent time a few crash? Head Are you not excited? I've never watched the X-Files. No. What if How Matt, dare what, you? What if Matt Smith was in it? What if Matt Smith Matt Smith, Smith is Matt in the Smith first four in? seasons, and that's all what you got to watch. <laughs> what if Mulder stumbles into a field and there's a TARDIS <laughs> sitting <laughs> there? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I might have to leave now because something just went off in my brain. I need to be alone. As, are, are we making Carrie that my movie now? Son is playing. Yes, right. and they, they open the doors and Elvis Jabba slips out. <laughs> my whole world is Elvis crashing Jabba. in on itself. Oh man, yeah, no, it, it's it's a done deal. You know, the the, the sad thing I'm is, I'm glad you've said it's a done deal. Although. They they all need the paycheck, so they're gonna oh, do yeah. it. Do you know what happened in our house after this news? It was it was a marathon of David Duchovny. Why don't you love me? Which, uh, do you know that song? Who did that song? Bree Sharp. Bree Sharp did David Duchovny, Why Don't You Love Me, to kiss and to hug me. I want to kill Scully. I heard it, what, 10 times this week? Right? Am I right? Yep, <laughs> even my mom heard it. No, oh, man. no booze, that's pretty bad. 
Yeah. Yeah, there was a Wait. few playings of the video. There was some discussion. We sent it out to the other podcasters, and there was a wave of molder infused estrogen that came rolling in to Southgate Media Group. Yep. So you've missed out if you're not watching X-Files. Okay. We got another one? You got one? All right. I've got more. Yeah, I, I got something here. Um, CBS uh, is, is, is doing a Supergirl TV show. Yes. Right. And we they've have a podcast cast about it already. Already <laughs> recorded, believe it or nice. not. Wow. Girl from Krypton or Lady from Krypton? That's Jerry Lewis's <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so they've cast uh, Melissa Benost, uh, who's best known I don't know for who being she is. Glee. So she, she's one of the Gleeks. Yes. She's See from how I Glee. Knew what that was. I don't she, actually know. Uh, you know, she's fine. I, 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 I know from the one what named I, What Michelle I'm worried about Because she's got the dark hair and I've seen her on stuff. That's the only one I know. The, the only thing I'm worried about is they're saying that Supergirl's going to be a detective series. Oh, no. And oh, I don't know no. how you do that. Nancy, oh, <laughs> Nancy Drew, yeah, Supergirl. It's like... Are we going back to when, like, they made Wonder Woman powerless back in, what, the 70s, oh. and they gave her the, the white jumpsuit? Like, Super it's Supergirl. Supergirl detective story. Like, I, I guess if, if they do it right where she is working for the police and that's how she gets her info, like, a la Clark Kent working for the, you yeah. know. Okay. And, and then he but goes. But she's Supergirl. Does she really need? No. No. I, no. I, I agree. I just think it's weird. Does Kevin Costner die in that? I just want to know. <laughs> Kevin Costner dies in all of them. In, Man of, in the opening of Batman v Superman, he will die in that as well. I think the audience is going to die in that one. You know what? Let's talk DC for a second because I, I actually want to get into this one a little bit more. That's very disappointing news about Supergirl, okay? It makes me nervous. I'm a nervous farter, so Chris, watch out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is going got, on? Got that covered. <laughs> This is the uh, establishment. That's right. <laughs> um, okay. There was this week, I don't know if it was this week or last week, but uh, Tom Brady dropped out of Suicide Squad. What's his name? Tom Brady. What's his name? Tom Brady deflated footballs. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's really not doing it. You know who I mean. If you all don't know, Rob knows nothing was, about sports. He was and I just want to say one thing real quick. Because we're Tom all here Hardy? from Chicago. Tom, Tom Hardy. Hardy. <laughs> Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy on that. But R.I.P. Ernie Banks for anybody out there. Ernie, yes. Yeah, Ernie he's Banks. a baseball player. He died. Yes. I just saw it at the gas station. <laughs> oh, my God. It said Mr. Baseball you, died Ernie Banks. You you are lucky you, somebody's in between us because I let's, would strangle you right now. But let's I get off was, sports. That's for the sports podcast on the Southgate Media Group. We that do have one. We do have one. What? Who's we doing do, that one? We have something for everything. It's a nightmare to edit because I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I'm like, I know what a football is. It's that brown thing. That's about it. Terrible, man. Yeah. God. And if it's a Patriot football, it's underweight. So it's okay. <laughs> exactly. I don't know what that is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, All right. All right. Moving on. Okay. Moving go. on. So Tom so Brady quit the Suicide Squad. Tom, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy quit the Suicide <laughs> Squad. And, uh, it's, and Jake Gyllenhaal passed. And that's the news. Jake Gyllenhaal passed. Past. Now, this is why I want to talk about this. When, when Hardy, I can't do the first name because I'm going to say Brady if I say Hardy. Hardy left, and there's a lot of news about, or rumors. He left because of scheduling conflicts. Script, the, he didn't like the script. Yeah. His character, Rick Flagg, wasn't going to be very yeah, big. Th okay, they were saying that he didn't like that Rick Flagg didn't have enough of a part. Um, I call... BS. Uh, I think this story, just reading it, I was like, th this reeks of spin. There is something wrong with Suicide Squad. That's yeah, they what, shouldn't make that movie. When Jake Gyllenhaal passed on that character, I think that was the biggest red flag. I think they've got a bomb. And then I was talking about this with somebody today, and they said, yeah, but Will Smith's still in it. I'm like, did you see After Earth? Yes. Okay, Will Smith will do anything at this point. He did After Earth. It, hold he's on. In There's it. 20 million reasons he does things. That's right. That's, that's and okay. I'll give you another reason. Not anymore. He's, he's not getting paid that anymore. I'll give you another. No. Nope. Like, uh, they, were, they were talking about all these, all these big-time actors outside he works of, for like, tips. Downey. He works. They, they're not getting paid what they were anymore. You get a couple, a couple I feel bombs, bad you're for losing him. it. 
I'm, yeah, he's I, getting. Eight, I hope he can make his rent this month. Ten million, I guess. You know? I. <laughs> oh, he'll get eight or ten million. Write a song, <laughs> merchandise, and still make five hundred million off of the. Is, is that why Jada Pinkett is on Gotham? Because they got to pay the rent. Yeah, uh, that's so exactly why. Here's why he'll stay in Suicide Squad until oh, the awful. bitter end. It shows them that he's a team player, and they're going to end up hiring Jaden. That's why. Jaden will end up in a DC movie because of Will's move. Yeah, they, uh, they've they already rumored that he was going to be, uh, uh, I can't remember Terrible in whatever part? That's yes. not a rumor. <laughs> that's a fact. Well, I think, and, and you're right, I do think that's why Will is doing this Does he look Will like he's crying all the time? You ever notice his eyebrows kind of go does, up like yes. he's crying? They look like they're painted on. It's sad to me that, that kids my age think that he wait, wait, is the karate kids kid. Your age. Kids my I'm sorry, what? kids who are my <laughs> kids' You're age. You're not a yeah, kid not, anymore. Whoa. Kids my age. Um, we like Kool-Aid. Kids my kids' age think he is the original Karate Kid. No. Because oh. I'm telling you, the, the, like, my daughter watched that first because it was on TV, it, uh, and I turned it off, and I said, no. Is that, this no. is, is it, Karate fine. Kid. No. And she has watched it on a loop ever since. No, you watch <laughs> You watch Alien. In between Aliens. No. Like, in between Aliens. You listen to Mr. Miyagi now. No. Yeah. All right. Is that like, is that like um, Christopher Eccleston? Hey, is this the a first family doctor? show. Watch that. <laughs> I got a question. No, I've watched them all. I've watched all four is there, doctors. Is there anybody I here that thinks of Jaden Smith as their karate kid? Anyone? Anyone? Good. Yeah. <laughs> Not after that tirade. Anyone? You see what, some, what about kids a Lil's up? age? Yeah. yeah. Kathleen's in the audience ready to take a take a smackdown on anybody. Why? Because you're a big fan of Jaden Smith? Ralph Macchio. No, I know. Ralph Macchio. Ralph Macchio. It's all about the Macchio. It's not all about the bass. It's all about the Macchio. <laughs> That's going to be my new song. It's I couldn't about sing the Ralph? that song. It's either. all about the Ralph. All about the Ralph. <laughs> it's all about the Ralph. Ralph. So all right. Let's settle off. down over there. Are you going to sing for us? I, I would have, but you, you already, you already oh. stopped it. Every time we get so close, don't we? I can't. I'm. I'm afraid. I'm did, afraid. Did it, the okay. Here's a better question. Did anybody see the Jaden Smith Karate Kid? You did. You did. Anyone? Was it any good? Yeah, it, was okay. it, it was okay. It was pretty decent. Okay. I like Jackie Chan, and I, you know, and he was. Oh, okay he's Mr. Miyagi. Ooh, yes. Well, he's not Mr. Miyagi. It's a whole different thing. It's not. You know. It is. Yeah, they're not Mr. Did, Miyagi. Is he Arnold? Not, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need to know something about this movie. This is welcome to this week in geek from 1974. Um, <laughs> This is my question about it. It's like that's 10 is years it, prior to the Karate Kid. <laughs> 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 no, 81, right? Is that what it is? Something like that. So. I was born at that point. I don't know about the rest of you in the room. Uh, here's my question. I thought that was just a remake, that the one guy was Miyagi, the one no. guy was I mean, No, no, no. And it, we have, oh, and it, here we go. Uh-oh. So here's the weird thing about that movie. There's so it's, many weird things. Wait a minute. It's called The Karate Kid. The Karate Kid. Yeah. And it takes place in China. What? Because yes. it's kung fu. Wait. And it's kung fu. <laughs> but Do we get a if David or? Carradine was still alive, <laughs> he would have been in that role. I, and Quentin Tarantino would have directed it. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my. Quentin Tarantino <laughs> remakes kung fu. And oh. Oh. Kid. Oh. Yes. oh, yes. With oh. Uma Thurman. Make I'll it happen. It. I'll do it. Bruce Willis. Wow. Sorry, and sorry, David. And Garrity. instead of the yellow jumpsuit, she's in the Elvis jumpsuit. Let's just. Uh, yeah. Oh no, no. Yes. You got you to get out of this Elvis. Thing. No, no, I can't. I'm thinking about job in the Elvis jumpsuit. It's in my brain. Michael now. Madsen is already in the movie, so you can't oh, do that. So what are you talking shooting about? Shooting rock salt out of a gun. Oh, is it the best thing ever? We need to go home and watch some Tarantino, sorry. Martha. Sorry. All right. Yep. Tarantino. Bed. 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 Tarantino. Shame. Bed. 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 No. Nope. Oh no. <laughs> no. Kill Bill with Jaden Smith, a remake. Oh! No, the entire and him in the yellow. He's people Beatrix. Are, it's people the are trying to eat Smith here. Family. Oh, the Smith the family. Smith family. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, like like uh, that Annie thing. You know, it was uh, supposed to be yeah. Willow Smith in the role of Annie. Did you know that? I, it, it, uh, it's just uh, awful. Yeah, well, you know. it's just awful. And to think, I like to get jiggy with it. Hey, you know, I, I, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air loved it. Hey, for you know, all of you not paying out, attention, boo. <laughs> <laughs> I just ignored that comment. I just continued. Okay, I'm, I'm shifting gears because I you hurt my head with the Karate Kid thing, and now I'm going to have to go watch it. Um, it's karate. Karate. Simon Pegg is writing Star Trek Three. Yay. 
So this is interesting because first it was Robert Orsi who wrote the first two. He was going to take over directing, but he's not any longer. Now Simon Pegg is being brought in. Unlike the Suicide Squad where I'm nervous about these changes, I'm not nervous about this one. I think Simon Pegg is awesome. I think even if he's just you're using his name to put positive spin on what's going on, I think it's the right spin. I like the idea of him being involved in that. And if Nick Frost shows up as Scotty, that would be even better. <laughs> like Scotty's dad. Scotty's oh, dad. Right. In, a, in a Santa suit. In a Sorry. Santa suit. Oh, I have to say that. With, with or, a tangerine. That would be amazing. Or, or, he comes or, as, riding, a Bobby. or as a Bobby. Or as a Bobby, right. He comes riding in on a reindeer, and then he makes Simon Pegg pull his finger. This is the movie I want to see. <laughs> No, I mean, you know, Edgar I think Wright yeah, directs that, it. That's where I was going to go with it. Like, Edgar Wright, this Star would be the Trek perfect three. opening for Edgar Wright to take in yes. here and co-write this with Simon Pegg. Star I mean, Trek Four, Wes Anderson. <laughs> what, when's Tarantino going to do? Star, Star Trek Star Five, Star Tarantino, Tarantino with Jaden Smith. <laughs> Suddenly, <laughs> I'm in well, on a Jaden Smith movie. I, I, I and Jamie so. Foxx is Captain <laughs> John Luke Picard. <laughs> As long as he keeps his pants on, so unlike Django, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. okay. I, mean, I thought Simon Pegg is doing a great job as Scotty, and he's he's doing a great of, job in everything. He, he's added a lot of depth to that character, so I think he. How I think it's a passion for him. How dare you? What? Say that about James Doohan. Why not? I mean, well, no, I'm he just saying. No, 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 no. no he, he's, he's getting all nervous. It. It's not no, no. Kick Tested Cage Match. Okay. It's not about that. It's about. I mean, I think Simon Pegg has done a great job with this new. Star Trek yes. world that they've created, and, yes. I, and I think I know he's a huge Star Trek fan, so I think he will add a lot to the third movie. Did you guys like Star Trek Two Into Darkness? Oh yeah, absolutely, I did. I loved it. How about you? Yeah, I liked it. I, I thought it was fine. I didn't, I didn't think it was the greatest movie. I didn't like it as 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 much as I liked the original Star Trek that he Wrath did. Wrath of Khan. Right. No, not not Wrath. Or Star Trek. The, Star Trek One, one the, the first J.J. Abrams 2009 right. Star Trek. You liked that better than you liked? I, I did. Into Darkness. Okay, did you guys like Into Darkness? Did anybody not like Into Darkness? No, you didn't see it. <laughs> it another plug available after, on Netflix for seven ap- more days. After the Tarantino Marathon, we're going home to watch Star Trek. So, <laughs> all, so we're going to start from 1960s. Here, here's start the from weird Star thing. Trek, Beecher. When, when Into Darkness came out, all I heard was people complaining about it. And then I see this thing, and I loved it. I thought it was fantastic, and Cumberbatch oh, is Cumberbatch. awesome in it. No, I, I enjoyed Cumberbatch. I thought it was good. I have no problems with it. I just, I just liked, I guess, I like the newness of the 2009 one. The new right. hotness, to quote Will Smith. Of course. Yeah. Are we, is this a Will Smith podcast? It is. Welcome we to the Will be. Smith podcast. <laughs> this week in Will Smith. I, nah, I just, nah, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> now listen to a story about Oh, 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 that was good. <laughs> Thank God you didn't go on. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank God. I, I do know the whole rap, but we'll do you? Of course. When oh, we turn oh, the mics oh, off, you okay, need to okay, do it. To go Fresh completely off of it, Graham Norton show. They do. They make him sing the theme to Fresh Prince from Bel Air, and whoever was on the show with him played it on the keyboard and had to practice all week. He was so nervous. Look it up on YouTube. It's unbelievable. It's not Jazzy Jeff. No, it's not. It's just like it's, it's one of the. It's an English actor that does. He goes. I had to practice all week. It is phenomenal. Awesome. And, it, and he does it, and the whole crowd does it, the whole audience. Did you ever great. see, speaking of covers of the Fresh Prince song, the thing with the two piano players that did the piano battle on it? That's another one to look up. There's a piano battle of the theme to Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and it's actually amazing. <laughs> believe it or not. Sorry. That's our I, new I show, believe, believe it, it or not. We, did, um, we completely derailed Simon Page. Okay, so. here's something that I think should get booze. Uh, Julia Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, got crickets booing? instead of booze. Uh, I, I hate Julia Roberts. Uh, wow. Yeah, I do. I don't like Julia Roberts. Hate is such a did strong you word. See, she did was you see? wonderful in Steel Magnolia. She was. Wonderful. Wonderful. Green Tomatoes. Ocean's 12 is the reason I can't stand Julia Roberts. Well, she can't act like herself. Yeah, well, Ocean's uh, 12 was a terrible movie. And I blame Julia Roberts. <laughs> oh, I, blame, I blame everybody coming back to get a quick paycheck. I don't blame George blame Clooney because he's Smith. dreamy. And Willow Smith. Yes, well, Willow Smith. She's going to catch a lot of flack now. Um, and Dr. So Smith. Julia, <laughs> and Dr. Smith. No. No. no don't, you, don't you blaspheme Dr. Smith. Zachary uh, Smith? What are you talking about? Julia Roberts is producing. This is what. Okay. There's a documentary that, that is coming out. It's playing the circuits right now on 
Bat Kid. Yeah. It's called Bat Kid Begins. And you guys know what Bat Kid is, right? The kid that did the Make-A-Wish to be Batman for a day, and they, they fully made it happen. They put him in this suit, and they... They shut down San Francisco. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> and this documentary, I'm dying to see it. It looks great. So Julia Roberts swooped in on her demon wings and said, I'm going to make... Demon wings. <laughs> I'm really working the booze. I'm not That's kidding. Them. But she... I, I was gonna say, <laughs> send, I'm not your, worried send about your hate that. mail to <laughs> Rob Southgate. <laughs> not a big fan, um, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, but she is going to make a dramatic version of Bat Kid Begins. Why? Starring Jaden Smith. Uh, probably. <laughs> no, no. Starring her. Well, she will be the mom. She'll be the course, mom, you know. and Jaden Smith will be the kid. It won't make <laughs> sense. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's like the new Kathy Lee. Remember Kathy Lee used to do that with her kids? She'd trot them out. What were they, Cody and Banks or something? Cody and Cassidy, yeah. Yeah. You don't remember if you too, saw Star Trek, but you remember Cody TV. and Cassidy. I was going to say, that's terrible. I mean, that's... She's not going to be on our show either, just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Lee is... The invite has been rescinded. Um, so, well, are you guys you excited have about... If you have wine, she might show up. Yeah, that's right. Are you excited for a Julia Roberts-produced dramatic version of Bat Kid Begins, or are you into no. the, the documentary? No, I, I saw what happened. I read all the news articles. I'm, I was really happy for the, for the kid. I hope they do I an thought action it was great. Figure. That would be awesome. Yeah. And, and the you know, proceeds go to the family. Yeah, that would be that's just that would fantastic. Be all that kind of stuff is great. I, I don't need it to be exploited any further. No, no. That's, that is where the line is, and this reeks of exploitation and not cool like grindhouse exploitation. Because that's cool and yes. awesome. Um, okay, what didn't we talk about? Uh, I don't know what you did. Fox. We haven't talked about Fox. <laughs> Nobody knows what we talk about up here. Uh, I had, okay, I'm going to get the name wrong, so somebody's going to have to shout it out. But we have a new segment for This Week in Geek. It's called Way Cool Stuff. <laughs> it was a theme song. You didn't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I just made it up. Way Cool and Stuff. Here's why I want to do Way Cool Stuff. This week... Ward Seward, who is in the room, you've been pulled out, told me about the Microsoft conference that happened. Did you guys see this? They introduced a new product. Now, okay, this is going to polarize the audience. I'm a Mac guy. I became a Mac guy a couple years ago, and I'm a Mac guy, okay? So I'm in the Microsoft store, and I'm like, yeah, this isn't Mac. <laughs> and then I heard about this thing. It's called, like, I call it the Holodeck or Jarvis, uh, but it's hollow... Ween, hollow, Halloween. point, hollow, <laughs> no, I didn't look it up, <laughs> hollow lens, hey, so did anyone see the hollow lens, does anyone know what I'm talking about, whole lot, of, you know, you know, you get a car, you get, Chris, you're buying them, um, okay, so here's Any what hollow lens is, you want. here's what hollow lens is, it's Jarvis, it's, it's, holographic like you can't okay you wear a headset and it creates a like 3d holographic environment of things so like uh one of the things they showed in the demo and what i heard uh, i'll get to it you see i'm i'm scattering all over i'm so excited about this thing it's so cool like they showed this guy walk into his kitchen and he puts he has the lens thing on and he looks up and on his fridge come the logos for Facebook and Twitter and all those things. And he goes up and he pushes the button, okay? And then he goes over to his counter and he says, like, uh, like I'm shopping for a couch and on Amazon, and boom, a couch, a little mini couch, 3D rendering of the couch appears on the, on the, the uh, counter, and he turns it around so he can see it from all different angles. It is Jarvis. It is amazing, or at least it's the first step towards Jarvis. Do you remember in... Minority Report, yeah. how yeah. cool that was. And he had oh, yeah. the glove on and everything, the power glove from Nintendo, which is also awesome. Um, that's what this is without the power glove. Can I, can I just get Paul Bettany to move in and kind yeah. of just talk to me? I know you're smitten with the <laughs> Bettany. Uh, Love the Bettany. Yeah, well, that's just it. I'm not saying, like, Woo, <laughs> i got to run out and get it. I'm saying this is the beginning of sure. the singularity. We're all going to be taken over by robots. Um, no, I thought it was amazing. Yeah, I was really into it. And I want to see Apple do it. Uh, you know, look at look at on 
what, what's the bar that they have on the Xbox? That really cool one that, that does motion capture. Kinetics. Yeah, Kinetics. that they did in Paranormal. Kinetics. Okay. So that's a really cool thing, and now everybody kind of has it. Same thing's going to happen here. They've got this thing, and it really is awesome. Now, here's the thing that really got me. Yeah, you see these demos, and you go, sure, they're rendering all these demos. I'm calling Suicide Squad on it. There's no way. They let a select amount of press in there. There was somebody from Wired, who I am a big fan of. Uh, some people like that press people. They put them in a private room where they got to actually use it. They were stunned. They said the demo was real. They said the only thing, the guy in Wired said the only thing that, that he wasn't floored by was the fact that he couldn't, like if, a, if you had a coffee cup that went into this 3D environment, you couldn't pick it up. Wow. And he said there was no texture to the buttons. Um, it's not real. Right. <laughs> it's a hologram. Well, it, but it'll be just the same as like pressing buttons on your, your uh, smartphone that aren't buttons. Right. You'll, you'll pick up how to dial. Exactly. Now, now, if you looked at a button, you'd be like, what, what is that? So the other part of the demo that is amazing is, and I don't, I don't play this, but they played Minecraft on it. Anybody play mm. Minecraft? Yeah. Some people. Some one, two. So, <laughs> okay. Three. It was, he, the guy goes into his living room. He sits down on the couch. He says, Minecraft. And the thing he's working on, because it's like building Legos, Right. Up pops this big castle and everything, 3D. He can walk around it. He can see the whole thing. So if you're building Minecraft, it's more like even be building Legos without having to deal with breaking bricks apart. How awesome is that? I, I think that's, that's You guys are great. nonplussed by this. Oh, I, no. Am, no, no, I think I'm, that's I'm great for thinking. gaming and all this kind of stuff, but I don't want to sit there and shop with a big thing well, on Well, that's my just head. it. You have to put the... But look at Google Glass. Google Glass has even gotten slicker. It looks better. This is like an evolution from that. If you take what they're doing with Google Glass, add this holographic rendering to it, we are that close to a holodeck where we can go in and pretend we're Sherlock Holmes, just like they did on Star Trek. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, no I one mean, else is excited No, I think, no I, I think it'll be... And I, I love I think it. I'll be I want to be on a holodeck and play Star Trek. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the MMO RPG possibilities yes. with it just be like so do you're, I you're, you're you're in on that so oh yeah Battletech Shut would be good oh Battletech in a yeah, 3D Warhammer, environment yeah. like that my dad could paint him in 3D and yeah nice. my dad's that guy you ever see the 40 year old virgin you, you mean we won't need Pokemon remember the 40 year old virgin when he's painting the virtual? little miniatures that's my dad only obviously he's not the 40 year old virgin I'm here but there you go Welcome to Tech Talk with... <laughs> okay, so the, I had to get that one out. You got another one? You know, you caught me off guard with this uh, Google thing. I did, Microsoft I did. thing, I'm sorry. Okay, here's, here's disappointing news. DreamWorks, they're not doing as great with their animated films as they should be. I think they've done a wonderful job. I think they're marketing them incorrectly. I think that's where they're having problem marketing against, like, Pixar. Uh, where I point to that is Peabody and Sherman. I think they failed in the marketing on that. That was a fantastic movie. And it didn't reach people the right way. Well, I also think the problem with DreamWorks is is they they come up too quick with with random sequels for their movies of characters that maybe yeah they love them in the initial movie and I go to like Madagascar and you know then they focus on the other characters rather than the main characters where right, the story is right. built around. Yeah, like putting you, know, the, you get penguins the penguins and out, it's like having the TV show for the penguins great. You don't need a lot. Movie? Yeah, exactly. You don't need that. Or the minions. Right. I, everybody loves the minions. My kids love the minions, but it's like they fit well in the story. But when right. you get their own and all they're doing is eat, oh, bah, 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 yeah. bah, you know, it's just after a while, it's how much can you Are do? Are you like Rich Little over there doing the impressions <laughs> of the minions? <laughs> do you, give us your baby, Nixon. Baby. Give us your Nixon, please. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> was Sorry, that your just, Nixon? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. So, yeah. So, Here's where it's disappointing, though. They're pushing their schedule back. So the movie that I was most excited for was How to Train Your Dragon 3. And it's pushed back to 2018 now. I mean, they're gonna have, we're going to have like seven Star Wars movies before How to Train Your Dragon 3 comes out. That's disappointing. I, and they have some weird new properties where I'm like, these aren't... You know what? Give me... They said there are seven How to Train Your Dragons because there's all those books, right? And there's, I think... Five Kung Fu Pandas. Right. Let's not go five years in between them where everyone forgets right. about Kung Fu Panda. Let's get them out every what? like three years, right. 
and keep the excitement. By the time they get to the last one, Jack Black is going to have a walker. You're going to hear it in his voice. Right. It's not going to work. Well, I mean, what happened? I don't if, know why a walker if, goes into if, that. But. If they can do, if they can do. Catching Fire and all that stuff a year a year apart. Why can't they do those? In well, because the animation does take longer, um, so I get that. But a three year time span, especially when you've got it on a slate like that, right. they should be able to do that and keep it going. Pixar is essentially doing it. You can't. They come out with one a kids. year. You're gonna lose all the kids on it. I mean, yeah. What if it's seven and it's three years? That's 21 years old. That's 21 years between beginning and end. Right. 18. That's Showing off long. the math skills, huh? Getting yeah. ready for Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? That's right. Yep. <laughs> And the answer is still no. <laughs> <laughs> so are you disappointed in this news? I was disappointed because I, I want to see that one. And I looked at the other ones coming and I'm like, why aren't you doing a sequel to Peabody and Sherman? If you're going to start these other properties, you've right. got a property with known characters that was a good movie just mishandled. Do a sequel there. Pump that in there. See if it flies. If it doesn't fly, you're, you're taking a bigger risk with these unknown properties that don't look that exciting. Well, it's kind of like we talked last night about the Marvel New Universe from 86, which was a disaster. Look it up, people. It was a disaster. That's Boy, what they're doing. It's like, hey, we've got a good thing going. We've got Madagascar. We've got, you know, right. Despicable Me. Let's make some new properties that that is it because they're aren't feeling, as are good. They, are they feeling pressured and, and they're not as relevant as they were and, when they first came out? And so they're maybe throwing darts at the board and hoping. And, no, here's the other thing. The other half of me likes new properties. I like originality in new properties. But for these types of things, it makes sense to keep the story. You've got seven books you're working from. It's not like you're just hacking out a sequel. How to Train Your Dragon 2 is vastly different than How to Train Your Dragon. I know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> what, the Marvel thing? The new, it's, uh, oh, it's terrible. It's, it's Epic called Disasters. Epic Disasters. No, it's, in 86, they tried to relaunch this whole superhero thing, and they called it the New Universe. They had the worst titles. There were eight books. Is that what we determined? Yeah. One was called yep. DP7. Don't ask. One was called, um, what was it, Streakers or Sneakers or... <laughs> I don't remember anything. Skimmers or something. It was Fireman, Spitfire yeah, One was or called something. Firebrand or yeah, something. So Starbrand. Not Starbrand, Firebrand. Yeah, <laughs> that's it, a, it that's a red-headed awful. guy. Um, Starbrand. And that, the funniest thing with that is the character looked exactly like Star-Lord, but he had a brand on his hand. That's creative. <laughs> He's he's not sp he's spider guy. He looks like him, but he's a guy, not a man. Exactly. That's it was spider that dude. bad. Yeah, bad news. But but back to how to train your dragon. See, oh, we're talking about the, that. The, okay. the, the thing I want to I want to I want to I want to end with on that part is, you know, you you had Toy Story, which was 15 years between one and one and three. Yes. Well, you needed 15 it, years for your heart to heal after that first one. Yes. Because <laughs> by the third one, I'm not ready for a fourth go. I'm, I'm in trouble. Well, and they're going to do a fourth one. But I the thing is, are. you know, if you, if, you have, if you have Absolutely. a good story and a good movie, people are going to come back to it. You know, yes. I, can't, I went back to Toy Story 3 because I loved the first Toy Story movie. Yes. And I enjoyed, I didn't love the second, but I enjoyed the second one. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding? I love the second one. second one's good, but it. You know, it was made for DVD. Yes. It wasn't even supposed to be released in So theaters. is that why you hate it? No. This was made for DVD. It's, it's not, worthless. It's no, but I'm just saying it's... You, I can't you can tell this. it's not as great as the first one was. But the third one was... was Amazing. Yeah, it was one of the best movies I saw that, that entire year. But I think if you have a movie, and I think How to Train Your Dragon can be that, where children, when they get older, will go see it. Yeah, it's like the Harry Potter right. series. But yeah. I think how, how to Train Your Dragon has that type of staying power, and I and I think they can they the can last one. going a little longer in the years between sequels than other movies can. But Harry Potter, like Game of Thrones, like other franchises like that, are waiting for the new content to come out. Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling lagged behind the movies because they I don't think she expected it to be like that. Those How to Train Your Dragon are there. They're, they're right. out there. They're already that, there. That's no, already there. They know what it is. and it's, it's Right. It's so there. they just put it on the slate good. and make it go. The problem is right. they're trying to put these new properties in, and I get it. I like new properties. I like that. But in this case, I think it's a misstep by them. I think that DreamWorks is making a, a mistake here, and we've seen it before with other companies. <coughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider well, but you've seen it with other companies. When they make too many sequels, their property falls apart. Right. Or so podcast companies with too many shows. That, that, that as well. How meta. What, what is too many? About 55. <laughs> 54? 54 is too many. 
We have two cats. Three so is too many. Right. 55 <laughs> is the limit. Because 56 is the one starring Julia Roberts, and I'm done at that point. That is mine. <laughs> I'm doing Julia cast. Julia cast. 24 7 Julia Roberts news. That's right. yeah. Done. It's the Julia. All Julia Geeks. It's the first show he said no to. With <laughs> League of Julia's Julia. with a Z. Exactly. <laughs> right. Oh, that would be the worst. Uh, what else do we have to talk about? They're doing a blob remake. There is stuff. There's all sorts of stuff, and we just kind of skimmed over it. Um, you know what? I'm going to save this for another time. Actually, I think I'm going to post this on our website. I'm going to post this on our website. We have – I read an amazing article in one of the Geek News things this week, and I urge everybody to read it. It was in – I read it on JoeBlow.com, but I saw it go other places. It was – you know who Werner Herzog is, right? The director? Yes. Yeah, Werner Herzog. He put out a list. I'm going to see if I can find what it is here. He put out a list of like 25 essential things that everybody should know as a filmmaker. And they're like, I read it and I'm like, oh, this is so applicable to everything. And if I can find it here, I want to read a couple, but I'm not going to be able to find it. So you're going to have to go to our website to find it. Uh, I'm scanning through here, and I'm seeing nothing that I care about. There, yeah, Julia Roberts thing keeps popping up on me here. Uh, let's Is see. Is this the 24 pieces of life advice yes, from Werner Yes, it's that one. Can you find it? Can you pull it up? I am right now. So just you can just read a couple of them. Um, okay, so number one is always take initiative. So these are like, this is his, but he was talking to his life advice to filmmakers right. is what it was. But then you read it, and you're like, like he says one thing about like, Really get into music. Really listen to music and right. understand music. That is solid right. life advice. Like I'm going to yeah. read this to Molly and make oh, yeah. her listen. And if she doesn't listen, it's punishment. Th this is a good one. There's <laughs> nothing wrong. <laughs> she has to watch Jaden Smith Karate Kid. And that falls right doesn't. in there. Learn to live Kung with your mistakes. Fu kid. Um, no, there's nothing wrong with spending a night in jail if it means you get the shot, which is pretty awesome. I think that's that is life advice. There's so, never an excuse not to finish a film. If you, if you take it out of the film world and you put it in whatever it is, whatever your passion is, whatever your thing is, and you take the things he's saying and apply them to your life, I thought this was an amazing list of 25 things. Yeah. We are, come on, everybody, let's go to jail. Let's go. <laughs> That's a new movie. Werner Herzog is bailing us out, yes. Uh, so this I is think pretty that's amazing. It. I just look and just scan it over. That's pretty crazy. Well, we've so. lost Chris for the night. No, that's all right. Um, so I think that's it, unless you guys have any other. I mean, there's always a ton of news. I was really surprised at how much I found. Do you have anything else? Uh, you know, no. I, no? I, think, I, think, I think all, that's, that's a lot all that stuff is rumors, so it's, yeah. it's not even worth, worth oh, talking it, about right now. Uh, uh, Colin Hanks is in the Elvis Nixon movie. I didn't know there was an Elvis meets Nixon movie. To me, that's a big I, one. I think, I think it's Jabba. As no, Elvis no, no, meets it's, Nixon. It, as, as El yeah, it's actually, it's, it's Colin Hanks. There were like three or four. I didn't write down who it is. It's really good people that are in this. So suddenly it hit my radar. I'm like, there's an Elvis Nixon movie. I'm all about it. Except so. It's no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you just had two sides of me. The, the sweet side said, no, it's not. I don't want it to happen. The other side said, yes. And, make the, it a and the soundtrack is done by Will the Backstreet Ferrell Boys. Will Ferrell is Nixon. And no. It would have to be Dan Aykroyd as Nixon, wouldn't it? Dan or, how about Anthony Hopkins? Could Anthony Hopkins? Who was? We're not going to fall into the Bubba Hotep <laughs> trap because you so know sad. that'll go on. We've o we're almost out of time. So is that it, guys? I think that's it. Yeah, that's all it. All right, you can find past episodes of this and all of our podcasts at our website, which is www. <sighs> Got to pause between that. Southgatemediagroup.com. <laughs> Uh, and we also have blogs on there. We actually started a blog for This Week in Geek, and it's got one posting. So, you know, spend 30 seconds and read our blog. Uh, <laughs> I'll eventually have another, and it'll be a whole minute. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at rsouthgate. You can follow our network. Martha tweets from our network at SMG Pods. Chris, you tweet? Uh, I tweet uh, under Blue Box Cafe 176 also our website, theblueboxcafe.com. And the Blue Box Cafe is a Doctor Who-themed cafe, uh, patent pending, uh, not licensed, <laughs> whatever you want to no, say. No. Uh, but it's 
awesome. Is it awesome, everybody? Yeah. Woo. Great Ow. food, great atmosphere. We're watching Doctor Who while, while we do this, and amazingly with my ADD, I, I, I have stayed in the game. I so. know, I'm getting distracted. I'm yeah, it's pretty awesome. And Alil, give your info. I am at L-O-G-E-E-K-Z for the League of Geeks podcast, and that's Geeks with a Z. E. And also, you can find us at www.theleagueofgeeks.com. With a Z or an S? L Geeks with a Z. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on that. All right, thank you so much, everybody. This has been This Week in Geek. We will see you next week. Thanks a lot. Thank you.